Hi there, my name is Chris Harrison, I'm from AvarageTutors.com and welcome to this video on electrophilic addition of hydrogen halides. So in this video we're going to look at the mechanisms required to uh, get all the marks in the exams regarding the uh, addition of uh, compounds like hydrogen bromide, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, and we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, carbocation intermediates as well and minor and major products that you can form from certain uh, reactions with alkenes and hydrogen halides. So the first thing I suppose we need to look at is uh, what is an electrophile. So an electrophile is basically an electron pair acceptor. So this is a molecule that will be attracted towards the double bond which has a lot of electrons in it. It's electron rich. So examples of these um, uh, electrophiles that you need to know are things like sulfuric acid because it has that polarity in there. We have a delta positive uh, within the molecule. Uh, also things like obviously hydrogen halides which we're going to look at uh, in this video. Um, halogens, just standard halogens. Uh, nitrates and H plus ions as well. So this is comes from hydrogen, so adding hydrogen to an alkene to form an alkane. So uh, anything like this is, is obviously um, uh, an electrophile. Now the mechanisms are really important because a curly arrow in a mechanism represents the direction of electron flow. So when we draw on the mechanisms for these, you've got to make sure you're drawn the arrows the correct way around because if you don't, then you will obviously lose the marks in the exam. Okay, so what I want to do is show you a mechanism, but I'm going to show you two different types of mechanisms for um, this alkene here, which is prop one ene And we're going to show you two possible products that you can form. And you do need to be aware of these and the reasons why we get more one than the other. So I want to tell you, I want to talk to you about carbocations first. Now, carbocations are basically the intermediates that we're going to form when we come in up with these mechanisms here. Uh, and these are really important because actually, um, we have different types of carbocations. We have a primary carbocation, secondary and tertiary. And what I've done is I've drawn them as a carbon in the middle and the R group will just represent an alkyl group. So that could be a methyl or a long hydrocarbon chain. So these are actually really significant when they're bonded right next door to a carbocation. So a carbon with a positive charge, this is an intermediate, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, if it has one alkyl group attached to it, we call it a primary carbocation, uh, and this isn't very stable, uh, as I'll explain um, later on. Uh, the secondary one has two uh, alkyl groups attached to it with one hydrogen, so you can see here, and the tertiary has three alkyl groups attached to the carbon. Now, what makes this quite interesting is actually these alkyl groups push electrons in to the carbocation in the middle. Uh, we call these inductive uh, properties, so they push electrons towards the very electron deficient carbon in the middle and the whole point is to try and stabilize the molecule. Now if you have many alkyl groups surrounding the carbocation you have a lot of electrons being pushed in to try and stabilize that carbocation and hence that is more stable. So as we go across here you can see I've drawn little red arrows here to illustrate the alkyl groups pushing electrons into the carbocation and tertiary ones will actually um, stabilize that carbocation more than primary because we have three of them. So ideally, when we're looking at a mechanism, uh, the preferred mechanism or the preferred route that the reaction is going to take will always be to try and generally, to try and form a carbocation that is the most stable. So if it can form a, or if it can go via a mechanism that goes via a tertiary carbocation, then they are going to be, you're gonna produce more products going via that method than you are going via a primary method. So let's have a look and see where these fit in. Let's try and explain what's going on. So we're gonna start with the primary method first. Now you can see here, we've got our hydrogen halide and our alkene here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to draw our arrows and show where everything's going. So the first thing to do is to put your delta positive on the hydrogen, delta negative on the bromine. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to draw our curly arrow to show what's happening. So the curly arrow goes from the alkene and it goes onto the delta H, uh, or the delta positive H, and um, because there's the electron density, remember it's electron rich, and we're going to the delta positive hydrogen. Once it's done that, it, then this bond has to break, so it goes from this bond onto the bromine, uh, and there's your two steps. Now in the exam, they're looking for uh, your um, polarities on your molecule, and they're looking for this alkene, uh, this arrow going from the alkene, the double bond, to the delta positive hydrogen, and then this arrow going from this bond to the bromine. It must be very specific. If you're very slack with your arrows, 
uh, the chances are you won't get the mark. So you've got to be really careful with that. Okay, so let's draw what we've got here. Now, this, we said it's going to go via a primary carbocation. So what does that mean? Well, let's draw this molecule out. Um, so there's the carbon there. And what this means is actually, when you break, effectively you're breaking this double bond here. So I'm going to draw the hydrogens on there. Now, if we're going to form a primary carbocation, what that means is this hydrogen here is actually going to add onto this carbon here. Because it really has two choices where it can add either onto this carbon or this carbon. But if we're going via a primary, we're going to draw the hydrogen there. And what that leaves us with is a positive charge, and we'll do that in green. A positive charge that lies on that carbon. Now you can see this is a primary carbocation. We've only got one carbon attached to it, which is pushing electrons in. So this is the primary one. Uh, and then if we obviously draw our molecule that we've got left, which is Br minus, and we have a lone pair of electrons in that bromine as well, just on the side there. Uh, and these electrons are then going to go in and they're going to attack that delta positive carbon, or that proper positive carbon, that carbocation in the middle there. And we're going to form this product. So three hydrogens, two hydrogens on there, two hydrogens on there, and then a PR. So this one is called 1-bromo. Uh, one bromo, and this is three carbons, this is propane. All right, so there's our first one there. Okay, let's look at a different one. Let's look at the more stable version, which is the secondary carbocation. And uh, the mechanism is exactly the same. So we're going to put in our delta positives and delta negatives. So delta positive on the hydrogen, delta negative on the bromine. Uh, and again, the mechanism goes from the alkene onto the hydrogen and then from this bond onto the bromine it's exactly the same mechanism uh, and then we're going to draw our intermediate so let's draw out what we've got so far right that's what we have so far we've broken this double bond we're going to go via a secondary intermediate so this hydrogen this time instead of adding on here is going to end, add on the end carbon instead so we're going to put that there, and what that leaves us with is a carbocation that is now sandwiched between two alkyl groups, or in this case, is methyl groups. You can see here, look, one, two. So these ones are both pushing in electrons into this carbon here to try and stabilise this very um, uh, this area of electron deficiency. Uh, and then we have our Br minus. Still, it's over there. It has a lone pair of electrons as well because the electrons from this bond has jumped onto this bromine. Let's add the electrons on there. And these electrons are then going to go in onto this carbocation in the middle. This is a secondary carbocation, this one here. Uh, and then this is obviously going to form our product. Uh, so let's draw this out. Hydrogen there. There's the bromine in the middle there. And then we've got the three hydrogens. Okay, so this product is called 2-bromo-propane. You can see we've actually got two products being formed. So no longer do we just form one product. Uh, we actually form two in this mechanism. In this case, um, we've actually formed two alkanes. But we form one bromopropane, two bromopropane. Now these two are examples of positional isomers because we're changing the position of the functional group. The functional group being the, the halogen on the end. So this one's on the end carbon, this one's in the middle. Now the next question really is to find out, well, which one are we going to produce more of? In other words, which one's the major product, which one's the minor product? The major product is going to be two bromopropane. So we're going to put that um, just on the side here. So this is the major that's a major product, whereas this one is a minor product. Minor. Okay, so the reason why is because we're going via an intermediate which is more stable, this is a secondary carbocation, than this one which has to go via a primary carbocation. You may get some of this still, that's still fine, but you will get significantly less amounts of this compared to this amount here. So if you were in the industry to make 2-bromopropane, 
you would actually get some impurities of one bromopropane mixed in there. But um, thankfully, you won't have a lot of it, and you will have majority of that. So you have got to be careful when they talk about um, the uh, yield that you're producing uh, and the purity of the product. You, the, this will be classed as an impurity if you're not wanting it. Uh, and if you're in the industry to make one bromopropane, this certainly wouldn't be the method to do it because you're producing more of this than you are of this. So it's all to do with that intermediate, that carbocation intermediate, and it's to do with stability and this inductive effect, which is the ability for alkyl groups will push electrons into that middle carbon to try and stabilize it. And the more alkyl groups you've got uh, surrounding that carbocation, the more stable it's going to be. But um, there we go. That's the uh, electrophilic addition of hydrogen halides. Bye-bye.